Uh, good evening, everyone, on this repeater. My name is Marty, K0MLG, Q0, Mike, Lima Golf. I will be at Control Station in CS for tonight's TechNet. The TechNet is served to provide radio amateurs on topics that you may be having struggles with. If you have some advice, if you have a question or a topic when you check in, please let me know when you do. The net may be interrupted at any time for any emergencies or priority traffic. If you are listening to the net and you need help with something, say break, give your call sign, we will suspend the net until we get you taken care of. Is there any emergency or priority traffic at this time? All amateur radio operators with 70 centimeter privileges are encouraged to check in to the net. Club membership is encouraged, but never required for participation. Everybody is more than welcome to check in tonight. Again, my name is Marty K0 MLG Kilo Zero Mike Lima Golf, and that's how we want you to check in. I'm going to take check-ins from Echo Link first. Are there any Echo Link stations? Go ahead. When you check in tonight, using your name, call sign, uh, again phonetically, your name, location, and tonight, I want your current outdoor temperature. Currently here, just outside of Wellington, it is 13.4 and no wind, which is really nice for a change. I will now take check-ins Alpha through Mike. Alpha through Mike, just go slow and we'll get through it. Please call now. This is K0AZA, Kilo Zero Alpha Zulu Alpha, Ron in Fort Collins, seven below here. This is Kilo Three Sierra Alpha Delta, K3SAD, currently showing seven below in Windsor. No traffic. This is. And zero EMP, November zero, Echo Mike Papa, Greg in Fort Collins with Debbie, K zero DBE, Kilo zero, Delta Bravo Echo. <clears throat> My outbuilding is unheated, but well insulated, and my exterior is inside the outbuilding. I went out there today, and the exterior thermometer showed 33 degrees after this last uh, four or five days of sub-zero and zero EMP. All right, we'll hold up there. Now, that's not too bad, Greg. I, um, of course, my building's a tad bigger, and I've got some leaks in my overhead doors, so it was 26 this morning. Um, so <laughs> the uh, water dish for the gato was iced over. Anyway, um, Acknowledge uh, AZA Ron, SAD George, and Greg and Debbie, MP and DBF, DBE. Any more check ins for tonight's TechNet? Alpha through Mike, call now. This is Lima Echo India, the Missouri LEI, Chad Stout. And right now I have a negative 15 degree. At uh, 8 o'clock this morning, it was negative 3. Oh, you got me beat, Chad. Uh, there was a station that doubled the Chad go. KF0 GQH, Kilo Fox Rut 0, Golf Quebec Hotel, Kent in Wellington, minus 3 on my front porch, which is sheltered, and I do have a topic tonight. Copy that, Kent. Uh, any more stations? Go ahead. Zero P and K, November zero, Bravo November Kilo, Rick in the port. Now I'm showing fourteen below. I don't have an outside thermometer, but it's taking the reading from the Laporte post office, so that's close enough. Uh, whiskey zero, Oscar Zulu Juliet, uh, zero O Z J Dudley in Fort Collins. I'm at negative nine in Fort Collins. This is AE0CF, Alpha, Echo, Zero, K0, 
Charlie, Foxtrot, Ben, Four Clums, and it's also negative 9 degrees Fahrenheit here. Okay, well, hold up there. Got you, Ben, Dudley, Rick, Kent. Any more check ins for tonight's net? KG6 OPC, Kilo Golf 6, Oscar, Bravo, Charlie. This is Kilo 0, Delta X ray, Victor, Doug, and Lava. All right, hold on a minute. KG6, Oscar, Bravo, Charlie, get your name, location, and if you have uh, your outside camp handy. Yeah, I forgot my name when I unkeyed. Name here is Justin. I'm still at work in Fort Collins, and I'm trying to get my truck started in the parking lot, and it's negative, yes. <laughs> I don't I don't have the current temperature, but it's, uh, it's a bit chilly. Is it negative? Yes. Okay, uh, that other station after OBC, I got KOD something or other. Kilo Zero Delta X-Ray Victor, the name is Doug. We're located in Loveland, and it's minus three degrees here. Okay, got you in there, Doug. We'll open this up. Alpha through Zulu, Alpha through Zulu. Please call now. AF Zero GQI, Kilo Foxtrot Zero, Golf Quebec, India, Dock in Pierce, minus 10, wind chill, minus 15. AD Zero KO, Alpha Echo Zero Kilo Oscar. Mobile in Fort Collins, and I'm showing minus six. Don't know about the wind chill. This is KB0YDN, Kilo Bravo Zero, Yankee Delta November. Eric, mobile on the way to Pinewood Lake, minus eight from the car. W5VV, Whiskey 5, Victor Victor, Bill, and negative nine in Livermore. This is this is WB5TEX Whiskey Bravo 5 Tango Echo X-ray Dale in Loveland minus 4. Okay, we'll hold up there. Got Dale, Bill, Eric, Brad and Doc. Anybody else for tonight's Technet? Alpha through Zulu, please call now. This is KF0OPW <clears throat> Kilo Fox Kilo Fox Trot 0 Oscar Papa Whiskey. Um, and I live in Broomfield. My name is Miles, and it is about negative six degrees Fahrenheit here. KG zero EXP Kilo Delta zero Echo X ray Victor Brian Greeley negative eight. Uh, I also have a question. Well, okay, Gage, stand by one. Got you, Brian and Miles, and. The one with the question, I should know your call sign because I talked to you the other day, um, but I don't find my notes for that. Go ahead and uh, check in again. You are not holding the repeater. Try again. Kilo, Foxtrot, Zero, Oscar, Mike, Uniform, KS0, OMU, Jack in Windsor, negative 10 degrees. Okay, got you in there, Jack, Brian, and Miles. Anybody else? Call now, please. This is AF7MO, Alpha Foxtrot 7, Mike Oscar, Roger in Windsor, somewhere about minus 8. This is K0MLG, Marty, NCS for tonight's TechNet. One more round for some check-ins, and then we'll start off with, uh, looks we only have one person with the topic, and I had one tonight myself. Anybody else want to check in? Go ahead. This is W1VAN, Whiskey 1, Victor, Alpha, November. Name here is Ivan. In North Fort Collins, it's about uh, negative 9, it says. Also report uh, Red Feather. Uh, at the repeater side in Red Feather, it is negative seven degrees there, so it's actually warmer up in the mountain. Well, now that repeater did it, we'll stay in time with that. This is K0MLG. Got you in there, Ivan and Roger. Uh, any other check-ins before we carry on? Still announcement, too. Okay, copy that. All right, well, uh, we'll take, uh, if there's any other, we'll, we'll do some late check-ins after we get going here. I... Um, my topic was headsets with boom mics. I just recently, uh, in December, started using one. I'm using one tonight uh, with a foot switch. This is the 
Ohio Pro 6. Um, reason I got the 6 is because HRO had those on sale. The Pro 7 is more for uh, really noisy environments, and I'm not planning on operating in a noisy environment, such as an airplane or a command center. So I went with the 6. I'm happy with it. Um, you have to buy adapters for whatever radio you have. Uh, does anybody else use a headset with boom mic? What brand do you have, and how do you like it? Go ahead. Okay, uh, I think somebody doubled with me. Go ahead. I thought I heard my monitor radio double. I know Brad has a Pro 7, um, and he's mobile. Maybe he didn't catch what I had to say. Well, anyway, if you ever... You know, just for rag chewing, a microphone's great, but for running nets, it's just so handy. Not so much for this net, because I'm not running a net logger. Um, but when you're doing HF work and you're you're logging people on QRZ, or um, you're just even if you're not logging, if you're you're looking, you get their call sign to find out what part of the world they're in. It's really handy to have your hands free, and not have to put the microphone down, pick the microphone up. And then pretty soon you got two or three microphones sitting here, and you grab the wrong one. It just makes life a lot simpler. So if you want to simplify your life and uh, watch the sales, I highly recommend a good headset with the boom. Um, we'll do uh, one more round for some check-ins, and then we'll head over to uh, Kent. Anybody else want to check in? Hearing none, this is K0MLG. My name is Marty. Go ahead, Kent. Good evening, all. Um, first preface preface this, I don't want to discuss or or going to into the merits of digital FT8, FT4 versus voice, but I do have a question on FT8, FT4 with setting up ALC. The ALC, I've been doing a lot of reading, ALC I'm told set it up for either the less on your ALC meter line or looking at your audio, a perfect sine wave. And I'm wondering what people have been doing and what works best for them and how their signal looks accordingly. And zero EMP. Using FT4 or FT8? Yeah, I'm zero EMP. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I haven't used either of those two modes. I've used JS8 call and I've used some other digital modes like Radio Teletype and PSK31. And from my understanding, you, the, one of the biggest problems people have is overdriving the radio. Um, so it was my understanding, and I can't give you any hard numbers, that you you don't want a lot of ALC going on if any, and you don't want to be running full power on your radio. If you've got a 100-watt radio, you might be running 30 watts. And I know there's people that do FT at 1.5 kilowatts, which I won't comment on. But, um, yeah, reduce the power on the radio, and you don't want to be driving it hard. That's, that's the best answer I can give uh, from my experience in zero EMP. Yeah, everything I've uh, heard about those digital modes is that you can overdrive and start ruining radio equipment just really fast. So I, I, uh, I guess can't what I would I would turn it down to the bottom end. Uh, and if it doesn't work, I mean increase it just a little bit, but to save overdriving equipment and whatnot, I would just do as uh, it says and turn it down. N0 BNK. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, those digital modes are supposed to be low power. And you can tell by watching that waterfall across there, not the, well, the, the, the graph that's there, when people are running power, you know, it just flatters everywhere. And 
You can talk across the pond with 30 watts. You just got to keep after it. And it works. The low power works. So that was my experience with it. Uh, I don't think I've ever gone above 50, but most of the, when I run that is uh, 30 watts. So, and I haven't done it for a while. But anyway, uh, that was my two cents. And you're being cake. K0 DXV. This is K0 MLG, net control for tonight's TechNet. Go ahead, Doug. I've been running digital modes for 40 years. <laughs> um, the way I set it up is, um, it, it's just like any other mode. You use as much power as needed to make contact. Uh, it's not just run 10 watts or 30 watts. It's whatever you need in order to make a contact. And I think that's what people do when they're running 1,500 watts. They're they're talking to China or New Zealand or something, and you know you crank up the power and make the contact. But uh, the way I've always set it up, and the audio is pretty critical. So make sure there's no compression. Make sure you're, uh, if you have a bandwidth adjustment for transmit, make sure it's wide. And then um, as soon as you turn up the gain, just enough so you see the ALC meter begin to flicker, that's enough. Don't ever go all the way. Don't ever push it up to the top. Even to the middle is too much. Just enough so you see the ALC on the bottom of the scale. KF0GQH. Go ahead, Kent. Thank you, thank you, Doug. Uh, that's what I do is adjust it for the just a little bit of a flicker and not much, and then I go a tiny bit lower with my uh, power setting. Uh, thank you. It's nice to see that there's people out there that do use FT8, FT4, and find it fun. Thank you very much. You answered my question. Turn that back to you, Marty. Okay, glad we got to help. Um, I want to check with Miles, KF0, Oscar Papa Whiskey. I didn't write down if you had a question for tonight or not. Did you? Sorry about those. I repeated it. Did it call sign Morse code? Um, no, I did not have a question for tonight. I'm just listening and anything so I can answer anything or if the question arises. And this is going to mess Somewhere in the back of my mind, I, thought, I think Miles had a question, but I just wanted to make sure. Ivan, over to you with your announcement. Go ahead. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you, Marty. Uh, this is W1VAM. Just wanted to welcome everybody with uh, Fusion Radios to uh, you know use the Fusion repeaters up on Horse Tooth. There, um, they're uh, connected to what they call the XLX uh, uh, 303. Um, reflector system, which there's uh, oh, probably uh, uh, nine, maybe ten uh, different uh, uh, reflectors that, uh, modules that you call uh, in the reflector that you can dial through. Uh, try them out. You can do it uh, through the fusion repeater uh, by going into the wires X uh, mode there and uh, then searching for XLX and they'll all just come up. and uh, if you have a hotspot, you can uh, do it with a hotspot by uh, uh, connecting the hotspot to XLX uh, reflectors and then choose XLX 303. And then it will land you in usually module D, which is uh, um, 31088A, which is our uh, hotspot discussion uh, talk group. So um, uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, the website to figure a lot of this stuff is uh, actually on the NCARC uh, website there under the other repeaters. Uh, so uh, look there and then uh, choose um, at the very bottom of the list uh, the XLA, I mean the uh, uh, Colorado Digital Multi Protocol uh, stuff there that a uh, uh, bunch of repeaters that we have tied together and uh, such like that. Uh, come check out what we're doing. Back to that, W1VAN. Okay, does anybody else have a topic that they may have thought of while the net was running tonight? Go ahead. Oh, W0LEI. Yeah, go ahead, Chad. Uh, this is LEI. Uh, 
Has, I just wondered if anybody had any experience with uh, cubicle quads other than that they're a mechanical nightmare. Go. Easier at DXB. Go ahead, Doug. Roger, I built my first quad about 1968. And uh, yeah, they are a bit of a mechanical nightmare. nightmare. I used uh, bamboo, so it wasn't going to last long. But um, this really did work well. I had 2015 and 10. I have individual um, matching seconds, sections made out of 72 ohm coax. That's pretty easy to do. And um, as far as I could tell, it worked as well as a, a three element Yagi. It was, it was very good, very broad banded, so it's an excellent antenna. I don't know, <coughs> I don't know if anybody's making them anymore, but they're, they're just great antennas. The really cool ones were um, they had a hub, and uh, the, instead of the um, the arms going out straight, um, they were coming out from the center so that they were uh, at a 45 degree angle or so, and so you had a better optimization of the elements with uh, 10 on. Oh, I just timed out. Yeah, okay, uh, LEI here. Uh, yeah, I've been contemplating uh, putting one together just to put one together, and uh, I saw the boom was type uh, identified and uh, uh, that got my uh, that got my interest up and uh, I just understand understood that they had uh, bigger ears than a Yagi and uh, you got more gain for the same uh, for two elements about it as about as much as for a three element Yagi. Uh, you guys doubled the first part of that. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, right. Um, you're right. It is. It has about the same gain as a three-element Yagi. Two-element quad has pretty much the same uh, gain as a three-element Yagi. It's very broad-banded and uh, very easy to match. You know, uh, like you said in the beginning, they are a mechanical nightmare. But if you can figure out how to do it, you'll have a great antenna. Okay, thank you. How was the uh, the reception as far as uh, uh, your incoming signal, and uh, were you able to get uh, uh, better reception with it? Well, it's not that dissimilar than a three-element Yagi, except it's broader banded. But the rumor has it that they're lower noise because they're full wave. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, I just had great success with them. Okay, thank you. Uh, LAI, back to net. Well, Doug, I got a question for you. Are you familiar with a PDL2 Papa Delta Lima 2. I think it was either Antenna Specialist or Avanti, and I think they're still made. Have you ever seen one or worked with one? No, oh, I'm sorry to say I, I don't. I'm not familiar with them. Are they making quads? They're a two element cubicle quad, all aluminum. I happen to have one here, but it's uh, it needs a lot of. Well, not a lot of work. It needs it needs no bunk in zero B and K with his tick talent to uh, fix some broken parts. But it's got the hub, the boom. Um, back in the day, when uh, I was not on the hand bands, the guys running uh, PDL twos to talk around the world or you know states away. We'll just say they were shooting skip. And everybody's some people's ears just burned over that, but that's what it is. That PDL2 is so awesome. Uh, the guy I got this from he used to live on the Western Slope, and I had a. Uh, he was over. I think he was over by Craig, and I was just running a. I think a, a Mako V8 uh, V58 5 8 wave vertical. It's got four very long radials on it. And we could talk over the Continental Divide at nighttime, no problem, ground wave. He would point that beam in. It's just an awesome antenna. I just couldn't imagine, or I could imagine, building it for, you know, like I want to get this one put together for 10 and 12. Um, and probably would be able to tune to 15, I'm sure. So I've got an Antron 99 I, I use for 10, 12, 15. Uh, daily. So get a chance, look at Papa Delta Lima 2, uh, the new, uh, Roman numeral 2. 
and uh, all a guy would have to do is is lengthen uh, the radials and the wire, and uh, this is also horizontal and vertical. Um, so it's got two gamma matches. So they're a pretty cool antenna. Uh, any questions on that, Doug, or anybody else? Um, nope, I'm not familiar with that, but I would have to look it up. I could uh, I could draw a diagram of how to build a, a three or five element um, quad antenna in about five minutes. I know it so well. And uh, start with a piece of quarter inch, 18 inch uh, square. Two of those, uh, you got to drill a hole for the mast, put the mast in, and then uh, just just buy some fiberglass tubing, which uh, Mastran sells. They've got some beautiful stuff. Um, I just built a, a cobweb antenna. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but I built one from scratch. You can buy one from MSJ for like $500, but I, I built one for about 150 And that's uh, it's a half wave. Uh, uh, it covers uh, 40 through 6 meters, uh, half, half wave, you know, kind of dipoles that are folded into a uh, square, and you feed it with a, uh, not a 1 to 4, but a 4 to 1. Or maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, the the impedance at that is about 12 and a half ohms. So yeah, my my radio is telling me <laughs> that I timed out. So anyway, uh, yeah, they're easy to build and they're great antennas. It just takes some uh, takes some real effort to put one together. It's just not hard. It just takes some very time consuming. You know, they did drill press and some some uh, drills and stainless steel hardware. You could build one in a couple days. K0MLG. My name is Marty control for tonight's TechNet. Well, that's interesting. Um, yeah, might have to uh, come down and have an uh, antenna class one day. I, I wouldn't mind getting a, a, a cubicle quad up. I've got plenty of equipment to uh, put it in the air and turn it around. Yeah, okay, well, uh, any other topics or questions for tonight? K0DXB. I actually do have a question. I don't know if there's anybody on here that's knowledgeable in all the various digital modes, like DMR and wires and D-Star and all that. I'm having trouble sorting them out and um, how I can access these various modes um, with what type of uh, transmitter, etc. W1VN. I was just going to say, Ivan, come back. <laughs> Go ahead, Ivan. Uh, probably the easiest way uh, is the fusion uh, with uh, the repeaters we have around here. Um, you could use just a, uh, a fusion radio uh, with the wires X. And then if you have uh, a hot spot that you want to add with that, and then you can uh, take that fusion radio and actually talk uh, to DMR, D-Star, and uh, uh, other digital modes. Uh, some of the stuff that we're doing over on the digi Colorado Digital Multi Protocol is uh, actually doing the linking for uh, for you that uh, on a lot of our um, uh, FLX reflector system here has the um, DMR talk groups uh, combined with them. So um, I, I think the easiest way in is uh, with a fusion radio. Okay. Well, I have a DMR radio, and I finally figured out how to program it. <laughs> I do a lot of things and a lot of technical experience, but when it came to digital, it was uh, kind of amazing. So I've got my DMR radio. So can I, uh, through my hotspot, can I connect to D-Star or Wires X or any of the other modes, or is it strictly DMR to DMR? Uh, no, it's, uh, you can do, uh, uh, again, through the uh, repeaters up on horse tooth there, the DMR repeaters, um, there's certain one talk groups that are uh, linked to fusion, uh, linked to P25, uh, and such like that. Uh, easiest if you uh, look up uh, under the NCARC uh, website and uh, look under other repeaters, and at the very bottom, there's a link to the Colorado Digital Multi Protocol. Um, stuff that we're doing here, and uh, it, it is more explanatory how to enter the talk groups to um, cross mode over into, uh, say, Wires X or P25. 
Oh, okay, thank you. That sounds like a, a good thing to check out. I wasn't aware of that. All right, well, thanks a lot, K0ZX Feedback, on that. All right, thanks, Ivan. Anybody else with a question or comment? SAD. Go ahead, George. Kind of a question for Ivan. So when you go into DMR and you go into these various stock groups, is, say, just pick one, 3171, is that represented in Wires X as a talk group as well? So when you're on that, you're talking to people talking on Wires X, or are you one step removed, or just trying to picture the cobweb on that? On 3171 uh, talk group, it's also linked to the Greeley repeater, uh, the OJ Memorial repeater, um, is now a fusion repeater. Uh, and that's tied to 3171. So whatever comes over that talk group is going to uh, light that repeater up, and also the one out in LaSalle. Um, the, uh, uh, so the, they're both on UHF, so um, I was going to say one's V, one's U, but that's not true. But, um, yeah, there's a couple of them out there that uh, are, are fusion repeaters that carry the same talk group. Okay, so basically when they're setting up the repeater, they'd have to enter that talk group in as a native talk group or something, and then that would light it up. And so, like, if I go 310.869, then if that's not in natively, then it doesn't show up on the wires X radios that are tied to that repeater. Does that sound right? That's that's correct. The wires X, you can actually steer uh, any of the wires X repeaters to uh, different uh, talk groups, um, or you can take your DMR radio uh, with different talk groups and go into different uh, wires X rooms, they call them, and Fusion is rooms, uh, DMR is talk groups, so it's the same thing. Good enough for me. I uh, think OMU had a question with that. Back to Nets. Uh, copy that, George Ivan. Uh, OMU, did you have a question? KF0 OMU, are you around? Now, if he said he had a question, I didn't catch it and write it down. Any other questions or comments tonight? Can I have one more? W1BAM. Okay, got you, Ivan. There was a double. Who doubled with Ivan? OMU with a question. Is this OMU? Correct. Oscar Mike Go ahead, Jack. Yeah, I was just uh, wondering if anybody had any advice uh, on getting a general uh, license, as I would probably be doing a, a hand um, I studied in here and there, um, feeling decent at it, but um, nerves are kicking in there. Easy to go to the Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, Roger. I, uh, I held an advanced class license for a long, long time. And about uh, five years ago, I decided, yeah, I want to get my extra. So I went, I found ham tests online. I think it's advertised in QST. And that was just the most brilliant system for uh, going through all the questions and getting good explanations uh, of what it all means. It was a breeze. I'm not a super technical guy, but I, I studied for three, we uh, three weeks and passed 96%. Uh, yeah, I've found some of those uh, online ones to be pretty helpful. Making some flashcards right now. Uh, just happened to be in the middle of a night, but I'm doing it. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm yeah. I think it's just the errors that are kicking in mostly. Uh, but if anybody else has any advice, that would be much appreciated. M zero EMP. All right. Uh, I'm gonna. Go step ahead of it for just a second, Greg, because I'll forget. Um, Jack, do you have a smartphone? Uh, yes, I do, and I have all pretty much every device imaginable. Um, yeah, our thing is pretty tech forward. Um, okay, Ham Radio Prep app is what I use for my general, and. You, it's an answer or a question pool, and 
you, if you don't answer the right one, I think it's pretty cool because it explains to you why, uh, what the, it explains how to get to the answer for that particular question. So uh, that's what I used. Uh, there's a couple other apps out there. I think that maybe ARR has one. I don't have to know if you have to be a member, but there's all sorts of ham study apps out there that you can use. Um, ham, ham radio prep is what I used. Go ahead, Greg. Thanks, Marty. Um, different people learn differently. Um, some people can learn from a book, and other people have a harder time with that. If you're good at learning from a book, I really recommend the books from hamradioschool.com. And I believe they also have online testing you can do. I mean, like on your phone or whatever, uh, quizzes. But um, years ago when I got, I studied for my tech in general at the same time, I used their two books. Um, at the time, they did not have an extra book. Now they do. But hamradioschool.com, if, if you want a book that you can read through, I really recommend those. Let me reset this. The other thing in particular with the general license that is kind of hard, or it was for me, is you have HF privileges, but you don't have full HF privileges like Extra does. So if you get the color ARRL amateur radio bands chart, and I bet we will have them at the NCART table on Saturday at the Hamfest. Get the color chart, not a black and white copy. Get the color chart and really study the HF bands and where generals do and do not have privileges. And there's no logical rhyme or reason to it. It's just regulations. So for me, I had to just study and memorize the chart on the HF bands. But that, uh, that helped a lot. And zero EMP. K0MLG. If I remember right, weren't all the answers at the low end? Let's see. That wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be the low end. There was a trick to it. You never went to the low end of the band. That was never the right answer. But that was, that's where I struggled. With. It's like, why, did it, why do you need to know that? We all have a cheat sheet in front of us. I have two of them. And here's another one uh, for people to... Um, look at and uh, matter of fact Brad printed these and laminated for uh, him and myself and a couple other people it's Whiskey 7 Yankee Echo November Whiskey 7 Yankee Echo November and that's at AOL.com um, if you just look his call sign up you'll He's got a chart. It's got it's all sorts of general amateur operational data. What bands, or what frequencies for every band? It's got a centigrade to Fahrenheit conversion chart. Um, it's got an electromagnetic spectrum to study. It's got um, phonetics from the current list to the optional list and what the World War II list was. It's got your common QSO. Uh, our Q signals, our Q codes. It's got the readability, signal strength, and tone system, RSD. Anybody that goes to HF, you'll hear 59, 59, go to the next 59, 59. They're not, not everybody can be 59. Would you just please start giving the signal report the way it is? Not, it's, it's not 59 all the time. Anyway, this is a really, really good thing to have at your operating station. Uh, it's got all your international call sign allocations, um, all your ITU regions. I use it every day when I'm on HF. Uh, any other questions, or did that answer everything for you, Jack? Uh, yeah. Could you repeat that uh, website name again? 
Well, it's Whiskey 7 Yankee Echo November at AOL.com. I don't know if that's going to take you to the website or if that's uh, AOL. That's an email address, isn't it? So if, if you go to his call sign, I would imagine, I, I could have looked it up here while I was yammering away. Um, you, you should be able to find it and just, um, you know what, I think you have to order these things. Because this is bigger than normal copy paper. Like it's two, uh, two normal copy papers put together. So you have to order them, I do believe. My mom's a teacher. I'm sure I can I can pick them for her. K zero D X E. It's one more comment. W one B A N also. Okay, hold on, Doug and Ivan. Um, Greg. I know there's been talk of a general class coming up this year. Do you know when it is? Negative. Well, Jack, on Wednesday night is the club net. I would suggest you listen to that, check into that, and the president will be on. Um, unless he can't run it that night, but normally Joe runs it, KD0, TYU. And you can ask him, because I know they've been talking about a general class, and I don't see anything on their website at the moment. So, um, Doug, over to you. Yeah, Roger. I just want to touch on a little professional experience that I've had. Um, my last job, uh, I worked for the Air Force, and uh, what I did is develop online training materials. As you can imagine, the Air Force has got some really complex stuff that people got to learn real fast. And so that's, that's basically what my job was, is to figure out how to train people on complex technical subjects as fast as possible. And uh, so we did a little study. Uh, the department I worked for was called the uh, National Usability um, Practice. And uh, so we studied, and we tried to figure out the best way. And, and I'll tell you what, you know, it's real simple. It's the, the type of thing you'll find online where the subject is, is explained you go through it, and then when you come back through, you do the test. And uh, if you just keep doing it until you pass all the questions, you can't lose. I agree. And uh, here's something else I'll say, and this is going to rile some feathers. But there's a certain thought process some people have that you have to know everything there is in that ARRL study book. And that's you have to know all that before you get on the air. I don't agree with that. Study and try to pass your, you know, try to get into the 90 percentile. And then you're gonna you'll you'll have you'll have quite a bit of knowledge. And then you get on the air just like on the TechNet. Uh, when this is where you once once you're newly licensed, which you are, you're starting to ask questions. Um, you go to the picnics. Uh, the people take their radio gear, and they, it's show and tell. But it's a lot of vast knowledge. So I agree with Doug. You, the online thing, study, take the test over and over and over, because those, when you get it wrong, it'll tell you the right answer, and it explains why it's the correct answer. Get your license, and then everybody, pretty much the checked in tonight is uh, got some sort of knowledge, some more than others, some less than others. <clears throat> Ivan's really good with digital stuff, uh, HF stuff, whatever. Uh, I'm not good with digital, but I, you know, I have friends that can teach me. So um, that's my uh, that's my thought on that. With uh, um, uh, agreeing with Doug on that, I reset. You know the ham. The ham nation, as a general whole, is losing numbers, and I think a lot of it is because uh, you know young people like you are even newly licensed. They get down here and they start asking questions, and some people get on and they start giving them no end of grief because they should have known that. They should have known that before they ever took their test. That's just not the way it has to be, folks. We need to have more people, and we need to help them. And if they make I make mistakes on, on here all the time, so, and I've been doing it 20-something years. We, we need to get off our high horse that everybody needs to know everything before they start talking. It's just not going to work that way. Um, this is K0MLG. Go ahead, Ivan. This is W1BAN. 
uh, back in, oh, uh, I don't know, it was uh, 90s there, about uh, early 90s, uh, did the FAA uh, flight exam. Uh, and uh, we went to a seminar. And in that seminar for the FAA test, uh, they was the same type of a question pool, where uh, questions and uh, probably twice as many, maybe even more uh, questions in this uh, test. But uh, what the seminar did was a multi-day seminar. But uh, they uh, went over every question and they highlighted the right answer. Don't ever expose yourself to the wrong answer. So go through there and highlight every right answer. Read the question, the right answer. Go to the next. Go through and read the right. Go through again and read the question, right answer, and go take your test. You'd be surprised how many of them you'll just just remember. Yep, that's another good way of doing it. Uh, you can find a site. I don't know if this Sam study prep. I don't think you could do that. I I suppose you could take screenshots of it and then end up print it out and study that way. And some of these websites will let you do that. It's memorization, and then you learn as you go. Um, it's like, like Doug, he's been building antennas for a lot of years, but when it came to programming digital stuff, completely lost. So you learn as you go. Uh, any other questions or comments tonight? Go ahead. Oh, I just had a double with somebody. Go ahead. I was saying I had one more. And some of you were going to wonder how I knew I had a double. When I run these nets, I set an HT um, a little ways away from the radio, and I'm using my headset tonight, so I had to bring it closer. But I heard the double traffic. I just didn't know who it was. So that's another. When you're running nets, run a, an HT volume down low, and then you can hear when there's a double. Go ahead, Ivan. Oh, thanks again. Uh, the uh, I have a all-star note up on horse tooth there. And uh, if anybody wanted to uh, dabble with the All-Star with uh, having to buy the, uh, the gear to start out with and uh, learn it all out, but uh, uh, it's very wide coverage. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, experiment with it, let me know, and I'll let you uh, the freak and the uh, um, tone and uh, give you the All-Star commands and, and go have yourself a ball. Anyway, uh, it's uh, geez, it, it stretches out there as good as these repeaters do. So, <laughs> uh, pretty good for five watt uh, little note up there. Anyway, uh, if anybody wants to dabble with it, all star, let me know. W1VAM. All right, good to know, Ivan. Yeah, Ivan and uh, some other guys have set up a really good. Uh, we've got a couple excellent repeaters up there at a, a private tower site. Just a stone's throw away from this repeater. Uh, we're just lucky to have uh, a commercial radio person in our W0DMR group. Uh, any other questions or comments? Well, thanks, everybody, for checking in. And Happy New Year. This is my first net of the year, so I uh, had fun with it. I'm um, not sure if I'll be able to do this anymore on Monday nights. Some of our... Uh, uh, class for kiddos change dance class where she's on Monday nights instead of Tuesday nights and 1630 to 1800 and there's no way I could do this um, mobile so it, uh, I might have to uh, well there are some club members in here are there any club members that would like to uh, Try their hand at running the tech net on Mondays. Yeah, I give it a whirl, K zero Z X D. Okay. And just to clarify you are a club member? Roger, Roger. Okay, well, um, this is the third Monday. I'll put you down for that. I'll send an email to Joe. Um, and this this isn't gonna be permanent. I sure don't I sure wouldn't want to give this up forever because I, I enjoy it and uh I, I get to learn stuff and have better operating skills from doing it. So I I, uh, I would recommend for anybody to run a net at some point in time, whether it's this net or uh, if you're a club if you're a club member, just let the TechNet NCS know. Say, hey, I'd like to take your slot next week or whatever. 
Um, I, I try to promote people to learn NCS and don't think that uh, when I first started doing it, I was I was a pro. I'm still not, but uh, it gives you some really good radio skills, listening skills, um, how to take notes. And you notice tonight, uh, I always try to have some sort of a question. Uh, what month were you born in? I never I don't ask the years, but the month, or I'll ask your date of the month. And tonight was. Um, was temperature, and I've actually warmed up just to, to well, it was 12, now it's back down to 12.8, 12 and we started off at 13.4 at my place. Anyway, um, I will uh, let Joe know, Doug, and anybody else with questions or comments before I close the net. All right, everybody, thanks for checking in. This is K0MLG, my name is Marty, be closing the... January 15th TechNet at 19.02 hours. The repeater is now open for normal use. This presentation was brought to you by the Northern Colorado Amateur Radio Club. For more information, visit our website, ncarc.net. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.